Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. In today's video, we'll be going over how to identify the elements of a set. This is my take on a viewer request. It's not exactly the question that I received, but I think it will help answer that question. So with that said, let's get right into the lesson. And we're going to begin by looking at a pretty simple example. We've got a set here, contains one, two, We'll say four and five, skip three, just so it's a, a little trickier. And let's say that we are asked to list the elements of this set. And for the sake of the exercise, let's say that we are asked to put each element on its own row. So we actually have to uniquely identify each of the distinct elements in the set. We can't just say copy and paste what's already there. To list the elements of the set, the first thing we have to do is identify the elements of the set. And that's pretty easy in this case. This set is written in what's called roster form, with the elements written out between these curly brackets. And when a set is written like this, its elements are separated from each other by commas, which make it relatively easy to identify the elements of the set. 1, 2, 4, and 5 in this case. So those are the elements. We can list them out, putting one on each row. 1, 2, 4, and 5. Again, when a set is written out like this in what's called roster form, the elements are separated by commas. But it's not always this simple. So let's slide on down to a much nastier example. So here is a set called S. And just as before, let's say that we are asked to list the elements of this set. Now again, the first thing we need to do is identify the elements of the set S, but that's a lot trickier this time around. And what makes this example more difficult? It's the fact that there are commas here that are not separating elements of our set. So we can't just look at the commas and easily identify the elements of the set. We have to do a bit more thinking than that. For example, there's a comma here separating a 1 and a 2, and that pops up a couple other places in this set as well. However, 1 is not an element of the set S, and neither is 2. So again, this example is definitely a lot trickier. We have to start thinking now about paying very close attention to when an element starts and when it stops. And what do I mean by that? Well, hopefully I'll make that more clear by going through this example with you. So let's just look through this set and try to identify the elements. First, we have nice and simple, just the number three. There's nothing complicated about that, and it's immediately followed by a comma, separating it from the rest of the elements in the set. So we can write that three is an element of S. We'll list the elements going down this way. But then the next thing we see is an open parenthesis. So this is where the next element starts, and we know that it's not going to stop until that parenthesis is closed. So the next thing we see, a one, and then a comma, and then a two, these are not elements of the set. We know that because the open parenthesis has not been closed yet. So we know that the one and the two are still part of the same current element that we're looking at. It's only after the two that we find this closed parenthesis. So now the open parenthesis has been closed. That's the end of the element. And so this is the next element, the ordered pair one, two. And we'll write that here. The ordered pair one, two is an element of S. Now, the same exact sort of thing happens. We've got this comma separating it from the rest of the elements, and then we've got an open curly bracket. So we know this is the start of the next element, and it's not going to stop until that curly bracket is closed. So continuing, we see a zero, a comma, a three, a comma, but we know that these are not elements of our set because they're just a part of the current element we're still looking at. The curly bracket has not been closed yet, so we know we haven't moved on to a new element. And just to show you a strategy you can use here, you can do some comma color coding. So I'm actually going to make the black commas blue if they're not separating elements of the set. So this comma over here is blue because it's not separating elements of our set. And these two commas here are also blue because they are not separating elements of our set. Then continuing, we see an open parenthesis, and we could get a little hung up on that, but really we can just keep trucking on. We know that this element has not stopped until we find a close curly bracket. So then a one, comma, two, close parenthesis, and then finally we see our closed curly bracket. So that is where this element stops. Let me draw that arrow in purple. 
And again, we'll make this comma here, this one there, make that blue because it's not separating elements of our set. So here is our next element. Write that down here. This is the set containing 0, 3, and the ordered pair 1, 2. This set is an element of S. All right, moving on, we've got a comma separating this element from the rest of the elements, and then nice and simple, we've got a 4 followed by a comma, so we know that 4 is an element of S. That comma separates 4 from the rest of the elements, and then we have an open square bracket. So we know this is where this element starts, and it doesn't stop until that square bracket is closed. We see 2, comma, 5, and then finally the square bracket is closed, so that's the end of the element. So that next element, maybe you've seen this notation before, maybe not, but that is the closed interval from 2 to 5, and that is an element of S. All right, then we've got a comma separating this element from the rest of the elements in the set, and then we've got another open curly bracket. So this is the beginning of the next element, and this element doesn't stop until that curly bracket gets closed. Then continuing, we see 3, 9, 7, then we see something weird, another open curly bracket. Now, instead of looking for just one closed curly bracket, we're looking for two, because two curly brackets have been opened up. So our element isn't going to stop until both of those get closed. So looking on, we see one comma, two comma, three, and then we have a closed curly bracket. So now we just need one more closed curly bracket to indicate the end of the element, and that happens to be the very next thing we see, so that is the end of this element. And then this last closed curly bracket closes the set, so this is the last element that we'll need to write down. And this is the set containing 3, 9, 7, and it also contains the set that contains 1, 2, and 3. And this nasty set is an element of S. Oh, and I forgot to do the color coding there for the last few elements, so let me just do that. This comma is blue because it doesn't separate elements of our set, and same thing with these commas here in this last element. Da, 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 there they all are. So you can see now that only the black commas are separating the elements of our set. So hopefully that has helped you understand how to identify the elements of a set when you've got a trickier example like this one here. You really have to pay close attention to when an element starts and when it stops. Now let me just draw up one more example that shouldn't take too long to go through just to drive a particular point home. So for one last example, here is a nasty set called A, and A, believe it or not, only has one element in it. So how would you go about identifying this one element? Let me just walk you through that process. This curly bracket opens the set A, so we're not too concerned about that, and then the next curly bracket begins the element of the set. So now we're looking for this curly bracket to be closed. Once it's closed, that's the end of the element. So we're looking and looking, one comma, two comma, then we have another open curly bracket. So now we're looking for two curly brackets to be closed. We continue looking, three comma, four comma, and oh my, there's another open curly bracket. So now we're looking for three open curly brackets to be closed. And then, finally, 1, 2, finally a curly bracket gets closed. So now we only need two curly brackets to be closed. Then, moving on, we see comma, 0, another closed curly bracket. All right, now we only need one curly bracket to be closed, and then that's the end of the element. We see comma, 4, comma, and then bam, there's another open curly bracket. Okay, now we need two curly brackets to close out the element. Because remember, we were all the way down to only needing one closed bracket, but we found another open bracket. So now we need two closed brackets. And we'll quickly find those. We see the 8, then we have one closed curly bracket. So now we just need to find one more, and there it is. That is the end of the element. So that's just a particularly ugly example of this process. And when you're working through an example like this, your fingers can be a very useful way to keep track of the number of brackets or the number of braces that need to be closed. For every bracket, brace, or parenthesis that gets opened, you count up one on your fingers. And for every one that gets closed, you count down one. And then once you get back down to zero, that's when you know the element has ended. 
So I hope this video has helped you understand how to go about identifying the elements of a set when it's not really clear. And of course, once you identify the elements of a set, you can list them out just like this. And before I go, let me just leave you with an example problem. All right, here's a nasty set for you. So try identifying all of the distinct elements in this set, and let me know how it goes down in the comments. You can list out the elements for me, put a, a single element on each line, and let me know if you have any questions or need anything clarified or have any other video requests. Thank you all very much for watching, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. We'll break your fall. I heard you ask about